A very warm welcome to everyone watching on YouTube, watching online. I know that God has something special for you. There's no diss in the realm of the Spirit. Open your ears, open your heart, open your eyes. This is the time to be alive and to be used by God in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Come on, let's welcome the online audience with us. Then just quickly give someone a high five and take your seats. A very warm welcome to all of you in this church. One John chapter two, verse 20. But you have an anointing from the Holy One and you know all things. But you have an anointing from the Holy One and you know all things. Father, open our ears that we may hear what your Spirit is saying to the church. Give us wisdom beyond our years. Revelation that comes from heaven. Understanding, Father, of the times we find ourselves in. Holy Ghost, you have free reign. Move upon us. Move upon every heart. Give sight to the blind. Give hope to the hopeless. Be a father to the fatherless. Take the word this morning as a hammer to break stony hearts, as a plow to break up fellow ground. Use the gospel this morning as a sword to pierce the heart of man to divide soul and spirit. Put your loving arms around us, Father, and protect us from the evil one. Empower us and grace us to get the job done for you. In Jesus' mighty name. We love you, Father. In Jesus' name. And the church said, Amen. The anointing, our message The title of our message this morning is called The Anointing. And I do believe that I should teach on this a little bit so that we can understand what the anointing is and how powerful the anointing is. The anointing is very precious. The anointing is very sacred and the anointing is very powerful. It's something to cherish, something to honor. The anointing is something to protect and it's something to be used. We don't take the anointing, put it on a shelf or put it into a safe and we never touch it again. The anointing should be used. The word anointing means, according to the dictionary, applying oil. And by that, it means to consecrate and make sacred, to dedicate to the service of God for a particular role or office. There's three things about the anointing that I wanna teach on this morning. The anointing sets you apart. I want to read your testimony. We got a call from someone who hasn't been in our church for many years. They were there we were still, when we were still in the Roots Lifestyle Center. Then they moved to Vormaran Stadt. And now they found, found themselves back in Porch. And they found themselves back in Porch because they received bad news. Their baby was born on 28 weeks. Baby has apnea, is bleeding on the brain. And that baby's lungs obviously isn't developed, so it's on oxygen tanks. So he called and he said, you know, Pastor, can you come and pray? Thursday afternoon, I got to the hospital. I took hands with him. I prayed. Thursday night, the hospital ministry came and they prayed. Sent me a message the following morning, Friday morning. He says, he called me. He says, the mom is holding the baby for the very first time. There's no sign of apnea. There's no sign of bleeding on the brain. And all the pipes that is attached to the oxygen tank has been removed. That baby is whole, that baby is healthy, and that baby is healed. Because we serve a God that can heal the sick. We serve a God that can give strength to dead people. The God that we serve is alive and He's alive and well. Shout amen this morning. Hallelujah. Sometimes when the religious people pray, it's like we hope that God can. God can. There's no doubt in God's mind that He can't. He can. There's no doubt in God's mind that He can't. He can. It's a fact. It's a foundational doctrine that God can do it. God has given us His Word. So remind yourself when you open your mouth to pray to God that you're speaking to a God that can. Not a God that maybe, a God that can't. 
The God that you pray for is not a rolling dice. God, please might be saved and this time I need healing. The God that you speak to is a very powerful God and the blood of Jesus can cleanse all sin, can heal all sicknesses and all diseases. The blood of Jesus can cast out any devil in Jesus' mighty name. He doesn't win clean out some devils, heal some sicknesses and heals and forgives some sin. The blood of Jesus Christ is very powerful. Say amen. I know maybe you're tired. You don't have to be tired. You're in the house of God. This is not Jesus' funeral. This is the celebration service of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The anointing, that's the first thing the anointing does. It sets you apart. Exodus chapter 28 verse 41. So you shall put them on Aaron, your brother, and his sons with him. You shall anoint them, consecrate them, and sanctify them, that they may minister to me as priests. The anointing comes on someone for a specific office, to do a specific job, and then God gives power for them to do it. Leviticus chapter 8 verse 12. Yes, I went there. It's in your Bible, that book. And he poured some of the anointing oil on Aaron's head and anointed him, to consecrate him. The anointing is the applying of oil to set apart, to consecrate for a service of the Lord. 1 Samuel chapter 16 verse 13. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brothers. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon David that day forward. So Samuel arose and went to Ramah. Here are key things we can take from these scriptures. The anointing is for service. The anointing is for a special office. And the anointing is a special, a special power to get the job done. So now lady, let's bring it back to the New Testament. The Bible says that we have been anointed or that we have received an anointing from the Holy One. How and for what? The oil in the Old Testament was a foreshadow of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost came and He anointed us. The Bible says in Luke chapter 4, Jesus said, For the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for He has anointed me. The Holy Ghost comes in these last days. It comes upon a person and He anoints that person for a special office, a special service, and gives that person a special power. When the Holy Ghost comes upon you, it's not because He's homeless and He needs a place to stay. The Holy Ghost isn't homeless. The Holy Ghost is looking to anoint people, to set them apart, to consecrate them, give them work to do, and then also give them the power to do the work. So the Holy Ghost is not someone that is part of the, 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 just a part of the Godhead or just part of Christianity. It's the very person of the Godhead that's with us right now. Jesus isn't with us right now. The Bible says He's been exalted, lifted up, and He's been seated on the right hand of our Heavenly Father. But Jesus says, when I go, I'll not leave you orphans. I'm sending you the Holy Ghost. He will be with you. He will give you power. He will anoint your heads. He'll tell you what to do. He will teach you all things. When the Holy Ghost comes, He will take my place. Jesus said, I know, it, you know, when I say these things to the disciples, I can see that you guys get sad. He says, but don't get sad. I'm not leaving you alone. The Holy Ghost is with us right now. And the Holy Ghost is not a spooky Casper the friendly ghost, something that's weird, something that manifests itself only by goosebumps or feelings or visions. The Holy Ghost isn't spooky. The Holy Ghost is a person. A very powerful person of the Godhead. The Bible says, Genesis chapter 1, there was chaos and void and emptiness. And the Holy Ghost was hovering over the chaos, waiting for an instruction of the Father to create. And the Bible says, God said, let there be light. And boom, there was light. The Holy Ghost is the power of God. It's with the church today. That's why dead churches, dead Christian, powerless churches, powerless Christian is an offense to our religion. Because we have received the most powerful being on the Godhead and no one wants to walk in power. It's as if we have fallen in love with deadness and lukewarmness. We have services and there's no one getting saved. No one gets healed. No one gets a demon cast. It is just religious edification in most places. But the Holy Ghost is real. 
and the Holy Ghost is here. And the Holy Ghost is moving upon the congregation, already working on the hearts of His people, His children. The Holy Ghost is powerful. The Holy Ghost can slap you off of your feet. The Holy Ghost can wake you up and give you visions and dreams. He can lead you in a still small voice. The Holy Ghost can help you understand the fear of God. I was standing in the service last year and I could feel how the fear of God just like fell on me. And I, and I realized the anointing is not something to mess with. The anointing is real. It's precious. It's holy. And that's why I felt it is important for us to understand what the anointing does. So because without understanding, we will waste what God has given us. It's like telling LJ about accounting. I'm wasting my time. But one day when he's old enough and he's got the understanding, he can be a blessing. Does that make sense to you? And that's with the same with the Holy Ghost. When the Holy Ghost comes upon you, He anoints you. He's going to set you apart. The Holy Ghost is going to set you apart from the rest of society. The Holy Ghost doesn't leave you in society the way you think. He's setting you apart. He's consecrating you. What, remember when we, I, I preached that series. Consecration is a set apart for service. Sanctification is a set apart for being holy. So when the Holy Ghost comes, He sanctifies, but at the same time consecrates you for service. God is not a time waster. He doesn't save you and then leave you until you go to heaven. The Holy Ghost is looking to possess someone, to anoint someone. To give that per a person a, a, a life of purpose, to exalt that person into an office that they could never obtain themselves and give them their power to do the work that God has called them. The Holy Ghost lifts up, doesn't keep you down there. Let me put on my ring. Amen. 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 9. But you're a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, His own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of Him who called you out of darkness and into His marvelous light. When the Holy Ghost comes upon someone, He anoints them, He sets them apart, which means He exalts them. He takes a sinner and He makes them a holy person. He takes a no one, He makes them a someone, a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. He takes a sinner and makes them a righteous person. Don't ever believe that when Jesus comes, when the Holy Ghost comes and He touches a person, that God is fine with you staying the same. God is not fine with you staying the same. You had addictions before Jesus, you have addictions after Jesus. You struggle with things before Jesus, you struggle with things after Jesus. As if the anointing doesn't exist. As if the Holy Ghost doesn't have the power to help. Everything is mind games. Axolni, axolni, axolni. And then you do. What about the anointing? God exalts someone. He took a nobody and He made me a shepherd. He took someone that couldn't speak in front of people and He lifted me up and gave me a voice, a purpose to be alive. I'm not a sinner anymore. According to the Bible, I am the righteousness of Christ. It's a faith statement, family. As a man thinketh in his heart, so he will be. Well, well, I will thank you for Jesus, but we are all sinners. You are not. You are not. You are the righteousness of Christ. You're a royal priesthood. You're a chosen generation. You have been sanctified, blood washed. You're a Christian man. You're an ambassador of God. Everything God did for you, He lifted you up and He never kept you the same again. Hallelujah. It's as if Jesus comes into your world and He steps into your prison and he anoints you, he says, you're now a Christian. And he walks out and just closes the door of anxiety and closes the, the prison doors of fear and of sin, of your addiction. He just, he leaves you there, but at least you're a Christian. But you're a Christian that's bound by sin. 
That's not God. That is not God. That's not the gospel that I believe in. The Holy Ghost is real. That's why Jesus said, don't offend the Holy Ghost. There's no forgiveness of it. Don't tell me that when the Holy Ghost moves, it's the work of demons. My house is not divided. Because when the Holy Ghost comes, He helps, He comforts, He uplifts. It's the world that's pushing you down. It's Satan telling you you've gone too far. You've lied to too many times. You've sinned to too much. It's Satan telling you you've wasted your time now. You've wasted your opportunity. This will be your season and your season forever. That's the voice of Satan. Now people think that's the Holy Ghost. It's not. The Holy Ghost comes and He kneels next to you, take you by the hand or under your arms and He picks you up. It says you are seated in heavenly places. You are now a child of God. You're not broken anymore. You're not an orphan anymore. You have a father in heaven. You have a brother in heaven and his name is Jesus Christ. I will anoint your head with oil and I will make your cup run over. Jesus is telling you that you are blessed coming in and blessed going out, blessed in the city and blessed in the field. When Jesus comes, He lifts you up. Say amen this morning. Hallelujah. Now I'm anointed disciple, an anointed son and daughter. I'm an anointed ambassador. I'm not a nobody, a no one. I'm not a no one. I'm a son of God. And that's what we lack sometimes is that revelation on campus, that revelation in schools. You can't touch me. I'm a son of God. No one puts baby in the corner. Come on. I'm a child of God. You touch me, you touch Christ. Pastor, how can you say that? God, Jesus came to Paul. He says, why are you fighting against the ghost? Why are you persecuting me, Paul? Je Paul never gave Jesus a slap. He gave the church a slap. So Jesus said, hey, you've touched my wife. You have touched me. Don't mess with my children. I, you know, sometimes I feel, I, I, like, I feel anointed and unsaved at the same time in the platform because of emotions. But it's like if I get to the school one day and, and, you know, and an older man that I don't know has hit LJ over the head, he's losing his face by the power of um, my emotions. Amen. Because you've touched my child. I'm going to touch you. It is my job to protect my children. So if you slap them, I'll slap you back. I'm not turning the cheek, I'm turning your cheek. Amen. Now, as a human being, God says, I'm very jealous over my people. I'm a jealous God. Telling the enemy, don't provoke me to anger. Because when I slap you over the head, Satan, you dead. When you touch my church, you touch me, Satan. But the thing is, people don't know they have a dad. They don't know that they are ambassadors of a kingdom. You don't touch another nation's ambassador. It's declaring warfare against that nation. Do you know that? If you touch this ambassador, Satan, you've touched a kingdom you don't want to mess with. My God is not a pitiful God. My God is not a powerless God. My God is not a poor God. He's going to whip your blessed assurance because you've touched His ambassador. Say amen this morning. Hallelujah. You better understand who you are because of the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. We don't have confidence because we're cute. We have confidence because of the Holy Ghost. You don't have confidence because you're white or black. You have confidence because you have the Holy Ghost. You're a spiritual man. You're not a pigmentation. You're not a culture group. You're a royal priesthood before God. You've changed lanes in the spiritual realm. Do you know that? Well, only Liz Dunn knows that. She's an anointed woman. The rest of you need to read your Bible. Amen. The world is trying to silence you. God is trying to give you a voice. But the world is trying to silence you. You're too black. You're too white. You're too poor. You're too rich. You're not a victim. On the scale of victimhood, you don't, you don't even match the top three. Top three is sexual confusion, chopping off certain things, and maybe, I don't know, so you're not even getting a bronze, you're getting a, like a nothing. 
You don't even get a certificate with it, and there's nothing on it. That's how low you are. And the devil tells you you have no voice right now. But I'm telling you, God gave the church a voice. Whatever you loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. Whatever you bound on earth shall be bound in heaven. I don't need to be a victim to have a voice. I have a voice by the power of the Holy Ghost. I have a voice because God's words are in my mouth. I have a voice because I'm anointed by the Holy Ghost. I have a voice because I'm an ambassador of God's kingdom. I have a voice in Jesus' mighty name. I am not a victim. I am an overcomer. Same in this morning. You are not victims. Yes, but you don't know my story. I don't need to know your story. I need to know the Bible. Satan will do everything in his power to keep you a victim. Oh, shame, shame, yeah, shame, shame, shame. Let's cry, and then we cry tomorrow, and we cry the day after, and we cry for 17 years because someone has done something to you that you didn't deserve. Victim. In 17 years, you could have planted churches, built businesses, married and have kids. But now you've chosen for 17 years to be in a state of depression because no one understands. You're not a victim. Listen to me. You might feel like one. You are not one. You might feel like a victim, but you are not a victim. God is not a liar and He's not a respecter of persons. The eyes of the Lord goes to and fro, looking to whose hearts are fully committed to Him. That's why I can't be a, a victim even if I want to be a victim for three hours. I can't. I have stuff to do. I've been set apart by the Holy Ghost. I have an anointing. I know all things. The Holy Ghost teaches me. The Holy Ghost helps me. Louis, you can't let this get to you. Louis, you must stand up and preach again. Louis, you can't let this get to you. Stand up and be strong again. That is the Holy Ghost. Now, Holy, you can put on your heel song music and, and, and cry for three hours. That's fine. But when you leave the room, leave as a victor. Leave as an overcomer, not as a half-depressed Christian. Amen. Man, I get excited when I preach the truth. I hate religion, I'm telling you right now. A religion where you go to a place and you live the same way you came. And you never change. But you've been in the church for 20 years, 25 years, 30 years, 40 years. You've never changed. You know, you've never accomplished anything for the kingdom of God. No one knows you in heaven. Like the seven sons of Sceva. It's like, you know, Jesus we know, Paul we know. We the flip is yay. And then they beat him. Wie is yay? Nee, ek in die naam van Jesus. Hulle sê, wie is yay? Ons ken jou nie. We don't know you. You have no voice. You have no authority. You have no fire. You have no unction in your gumption. Oh, we discern there's no anointing. You don't even know who you are and whose you are. And that's why they slapped the seven sons of Sceva in the New Testament, not in the Old. The Bible says they ran naked away. They were out of This is embarrassing, men. But sometimes in the spiritual realm, that's what happened to Christians. They get beaten by a system. And they run away naked. Instead of standing with their, with their heels on the enemy's head, with a spear and says, I've conquered this one. I'm going to conquer that devil as well. That is the spirit that's supposed to be on the church. You've touched me. I've hit you back. Now say sorry. But I'm not backing down. Now for some of you, says, Pastor, was he lifted? Was, does he lift on here about to do? I promise you before God. That's why Jesus turned over the table. Do you know Jesus had enough time to make a, his own whip? He didn't grip someone else's whip out of emotion. And, yeah, 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 yeah. No, the Bible says he went and he folded his own whip. So he had to think what he now can do. Here I can, here are people. Yeah. How many times do I have to say that it's a house of prayer? And then, and then he went, into the temple. He didn't have a mood. He knew what he was going to do because he loved his people. The church is not something to be dead. It's not a, a place where the lukewarm can gather on a Sunday. The church is not supposed to be a well that's never stirred. The church is to be a place of revival, a place of power, a place of the Holy Ghost, a place where people change, a place where people get saved in the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, give Jesus a shout of praise. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. 
He has anointed you to leave the state in which he found you. He goes to someone that's a nobody and he anoints him and he lifts him, exalts them. He lifts your head, puts you into a new role. He lifts you up to a better place. He never leave you, leaves you in the pit. And that's why it's important to understand I'm not the old man anymore. I'm a new creature in Christ. Yeah, hallelujah. I got that memory on Facebook where we part. I said, that's the, old, the photos of the old man. I'm a new man now. And then Satan comes. Yeah, but did you remember what you've done? I said, I'm a new man now. Speak to the hand. The face is busy. I'm a new man now. You don't entertain conversations with the devil about your past. I'm a new creature. I'm born again. I'm a child of God. That is the confidence Christians should have in what Jesus has done for them. But some of you feel guilty to think that way because you've been taught you must suffer for Jesus. You must be a victim for Jesus. You should have nothing, owe nothing, and just be happy. And Jesus said, no, I'm going to give you five talents. When I come back, there better be ten. Use your brain, your anointing, your intellect, and do business until I return. Stand up. Tell your world about me. Yeah, but they, uh, they know my story. That's exactly why you need to tell them. You're a new person now. Tell them what I have done for you. You're not a sinner anymore. You're not an adulterer anymore. You're not a thief anymore. You're not a murderer anymore. You're not confused anymore. I came so that I can establish my order in this last days of time. Say amen. Hallelujah. Well, the anointing is upon the new man. I'm not the old man anymore. I know I've said it, but you need to hear. You're a new person. You're a new person. Because the Holy Ghost has anointed you and set you apart. He has consecrated you. The second thing the anointing does. The anointing I have received from the Holy Ghost is for purpose. Imagine I'm being anointed for a pastor and I never shepherd flock. I have been anointed by God to lead a congregation to shepherd the flock of God. And I've decided, no, I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm going to be a project manager. You know, I'm just resigning from church affairs. I, I would love to be a part of this building project. I'm a project manager right now. I haven't been anointed to do that. I've been anointed to shepherd the flock. The anointing I have received was for purpose. I, sh I shouldn't now suddenly change the office that He has given me and the anointing that He has given me. He has anointed you for purpose. Some of you are teachers because God has anointed you to be a teacher. And that anointing is not something spooky. That anointing is for service. There's many kids. My on my I can't wait to have an acorn in our new building. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Man, I'm telling you. Anointed for service. Because the anointing of being a pastor is not to get a title, it's to actually shepherd the flock, to smell like the sheep. It's not to sit on a throne at a wedding and people come and crawl before you because now you're a shepherd. No, the shepherd is to shepherd the flock. The shepherd's main responsibility is to feed the flock, to protect the flock. I haven't been anointed to be someone I'm not. I'm anointed for service. So people sometimes get the title in that I'm a businessman. Yes, anointed to do what? No, to be a business. For what reason are you anointed? You're anointed by God to fund the end time revival. Do you know that as a businessman? You're not anointed to have nine boats and three houses and nine cars. You're anointed to do business so you can fund the end time revival to fast forward the growth and the things of the church by contributing your finances. You're anointed to do business to fund the gospel of Jesus Christ. You're not anointed to gloat. You're not anointed to drive a BMW X5 or X7 or I8 or Ferrari. Have one. I don't care. But you're not anointed for those things. You're anointed for purpose, for service. There's many people that have the title that the world gave them, but there's no service. It's like our government. They have the titles, but there's no service. Am I speaking to Canada? Don't you stand in lines, wait for your licenses, and wait for potholes to be fixed? The entire job 
The entire job of the government is to finance the infrastructure of our country, to serve the people of our country. But they've used their titles to fed themselves to an obese state where the poor is poorer. But the government is fatter and richer. Let that offend you. They have titles but no purpose. Some of you in Christianity has it, I'm a prophetess, but no one cares. No one cares about your title because no one benefits by your service. I gave them a word. So what? It's easy to give someone a word. Who have you served? Who have you helped? Who have you discipled? Who have you led? Whose life has you, have you changed by being a disciple of Jesus? You're anointed for service, not anointed to glow. Mensen praat ek Grieks vir oogend. En ek is, so when someone says, Pastor, you must get this prophet over to the church. I says, what has he done? No, he goes from church to church. I said, I can go from church to church. What has he built? Wat het die man, hoeveel siel het al gewer die laaste drie jaar? Or does his prophetic words leave to no souls? Which is heaven's number one agenda. I'll, I'm, I'm leaving the 99 to go fetch the one that's lost. So if he comes with his gift and no one gets saved, he doesn't have a gift. He's got arrogance. He's got ignorance. He's got a title. But there's no service that expands the kingdom of God. And that might offend you. When Tani Sani had the teabladen gelees, your hand palm gelees, a prophetische woord gegeer dat jy voor a stadion gaan sing, maar nummer 1, jy kan nie sing nie. So it's a false prophecy. Amen. Well, I'm not angry, I'm just helping. The anointing is for service. When you're an overseer, it's for service. When you're on the platform, it's to serve the people. The anointing is not so that you can make people feel something. It's to serve the people, to connect with God. The anointing is in goosebumps. It's for service. How does I want to be a pastor? I said, do you know how emotionally draining it can be sometimes to be a pastor? How does I also want to preach? I said, I preach once a week. Further sit ek met die skaap en ek vir bouw en skier, skier die skaap Bossel sy tanne, maak sy oor skoon. That's my life. And on Sunday, I'm on a platform and then I preach the gospel. It's for service. It's to counsel. It's to advise. It's to go to hospitals and pray for the sick and visit the prisons and make sure the poor has something to eat and it's clothes on their back. The anointing is to serve the purpose of God's kingdom. The anointing isn't something spooky, something flaky that no one can touch. Oh, that's an anointed person. What makes you anointed? They've got like a sixth sense. So do we. It's called the Holy Ghost. In any case, I don't, I need, don't need anyone to tell me who I am. I know who I am. I read the Bible actually. If you read the Bible, you'll know who you are. You don't need something. One day, God's going to... Yeah, the Bible says the head and not the tail. So how high can you go? Bless coming in, bless going out. How much more do I need to tell you that you are blessed? Oh, you've got a special anointing. All the anointings are special. It's not a prophetic word. It's flattering the Christians. I can see you're going to have a big business. All businessmen should have a big business. It's the anointing on their life. If it's small, it's because they keep remaining small in their own mind. Most of these things just flatter the congregation. You don't have to be flattered. You need to know, not flattened, flattered. You just need to know who you are and you'll do something for God. Man, th this sermon is a great sermon. Number three, and then I need to conclude. The anointing is powerful. Luke 4, chapter 4, verse 18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captive and recovery of sight to the blind. When the Holy Ghost is in a place, these things happen naturally. Because the Holy Ghost has anointed me too. Something is about to happen when the Holy Ghost is in a place. And these things are going to happen. Recovery of sight to the blind and set liberty to those who are oppressed. The anointing is the powerful is the power of the Holy Ghost. And the anointing is not just for someone, but the anointing is for you. Isaiah 10 verse 27. It shall come to pass in that day 
that his burden will be taken away from your shoulder and his yoke from your neck. The yoke of bondage, the burden of fear and pain of whatever you've been through. You're, some of you are carrying a yoke and a burden. And the yoke will be destroyed because of the anointing. And the yoke will be destroyed because of the anointing. The yoke will be destroyed because of the anointing. You struggle with an addiction, the anointing is going to destroy that addiction. You struggle with sickness and disease, the anointing is going to destroy that sickness and disease. Don't say, ya, ya, marni, ni marni. The anointing destroys the yoke. The anointing destroys the burden. The anointing heals your broken heart. The anointing sets the captives free. The anointing gives sight to the blind. The anointing stirs the waters. The anointing brings miracles. The anointing lifts people up. The anointing is very, very powerful. Shout amen this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The anointing is not to look good. The anointing is for service and the anointing will change you. When the Holy Ghost anoints me and when the Holy Ghost anoints you, it destroys the power of sin. I'm going to share this again to you for those that have never heard it. I was a student and I told God, I'll never sin in my life again. You told that woman that was caught in the act of the adultery, says, go and sin no more. So I said, if you can tell her to sin no more, I want to sin no more. That's in my Bible study. I read it. I said, well, if she can, I must. So I tried to sin no more. And um, I could not. I couldn't. So I stole my conf- confidence. I said, well, God, I'll never be, you'll never be able to use me because I still struggle sometimes with this and struggle with that. And one night I had a dream from God. It was this massive mountain. God says, climb over this mountain. Climb over this mountain. I said, I can't. It's too high. He says, Louis, climb over this mountain. Climb over this mountain. I said, I can't. It's too high. God says, Louis, you are lying on your belly. Stand up. And as I stood, I saw it's just a massive anthill. God says, please walk over it. I woke up and I knew that's sin. That's sin, your perspective on sin. I was consumed not to sin. Now I'm consumed in staying in my lane, running in the anointing to get a job down. And the, mo- the, the, the more I do it, the less I sin. Sin has been overcome. Die doodsangel is uitgehaal. I'm not a sinner. I'm an ambassador. And what I should consecrate, consecrate, concentrate on is to be an ambassador, not to not be a sinner. I need to concentrate that I'm a shepherd. I don't have to concentrate that I should not be a sinner. I'm not a sinner. The anointing has consecrated me. The anointing has given me a job to do. And the anointing is the power to get the job done. And I'm consumed in my mind with these things. That means that death and the stench of sin isn't near me anymore. I'm running towards the light and darkness can't comprehend the light. Greater is he that is in me than he who is in the world. I am the head, I'm not the tail. I won't be wagged around. I am focused, I am determined on the job I need to do. I don't have time to sin. I don't have time to steal. I don't have time to go and play double machina. I don't have time to do stupid things. I'm obsessed with kingdom purpose. Say amen. Christians that can't get out of sin is bored Christians. I literally don't have time after a long day to go to um, the corporatie and drink a beer so with three other mans. I get the vrouw and two kinders. Does that make sense? I can't. I have not enough time in the day to go to sleep so with other people. Bored Christians are sinful Christians. You have, I've got kids to raise. I've got a marriage to build. I've got a congregation to build. I'm consumed with those three things. I don't have time to do other stuff. I physically don't have the time to buy another phone and SMS another woman. I don't have the time to say, I, it's like you're consumed with kingdom expansion. You don't have time. If you have time, you have time to sin. Let me not get distracted. The anointing destroys the power of addiction. 
You know what I've seen with the people that's bound by addiction? They want to be addicted. It's not no, the, the blood doesn't have power, the anointing. They want to be addicted. That's why most Christians can't get out of addiction. Yeah, but God understands my heart. Yeah, He understands your heart. You're an ambassador. You're not an addicted person. He says, rule over the grass, not smoke the grass. Rule over. Rule over. Yeah. Now the grass rules you. Huh? The grass dominates you. It controls you. That addiction controls your finances. It it controls your decisions and your choices. You should be the one that's on the throne, that have control. But now these addictions and sins is controlling you. You've swapped around. Now you, the, the, the tail, the dog wags. You're not the head anymore. When the Holy Ghost anoints you, it breaks the power of addiction to whoever wants to believe in it. I believe that God can do it. God then will do it. Listen, God will do it. Make up your mind. I'm never going to drink again. Then never drink again. I'm never going to do this again. Then never do it again. I can't pass You can. You're anointed. The power breaks the yoke. It breaks the burden. You don't need to give yourself a reason to continue in sin. You don't have to sin. You don't have to be addicted. You don't have to be pulled by this old friends to go and drink every from Wednesday and every Friday, every Saturday. But I froze if I pastor. I believe my man Mary. I say my is always excited. So much say friend. Say what's the life is that? Nummer 1, jy het eindelijk nie die woord van die Heere nodig nie. Jy het een fluiter nodig en dan die woord van die Heere nodig. Well, maybe they must come at the same time. You have a family. You better man up and raise those kids in God's house. Not say, well, I feel like let, let's go and, and you know, go ski on Porch Dam. You're not skiing on a Sunday morning. You're skiing on the cloud of glory here in the church. Amen. Amen. You bring your family to church as a man. In any case, let me, let me complete. The anointing destroys the power of the enemies. The demon power doesn't have authority. Even if someone, listen to me, is possessed with one million demons and they come to you. It's not time to say, it's time to say, what do you want? What do you need? Now in the mighty name of Jesus, the one spirit in me is bigger and stronger a billion times than the million spirits that's in you. I cast you out, you don't cast me out. I dominate you, you don't dominate me. I bring fear on you, you don't bring fear on me. I have the keys, I bound, I loose, I open up, I heal, I heal the heart. I set those that are captives at liberty. I have the power because I'm an ambassador. I'm a disciple, I'm anointed by God. I'm full of the Holy Ghost. I've got His fire on my head. He's fire in my mouth and He's fire in my belly. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Come on, give Jesus a praise this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Man, I'm telling you. We are running out of time. I want all of you to stand to your feet quickly. I'm going to break the devil's neck this morning. And we're going to pray for people. But what are we all going to do? We're going to use the power of unity in the name of Jesus. We two or more touch and agree upon. God will give it unto them. So I'm going to give certain categories and you're going to raise your hand. Then the people around you, they're going to lightly put put their hands on you and I'm going to pray over you. Certain things are going to leave. If there's anyone among you, the Bible says, struggles with sickness and diseases, I want you to lift your hands wherever you are. It can be anything. There's a person, please surround her. Here in the middle, there's people, Come. Put your hands around them, Christians. They're at the back. You're in the front. You're on my left. Come look around. They're at the back. Come on. They're at the far back. Come on. Put your hands on people. They're on your right. Peter, your linker kant. Achter, pink rock. I want to pray now. You find someone. If you want, pray for your healing. Then lift your hand. Then we don't miss you. Come here. Come here. Come here. The devil is a liar. You don't have to remain sick your entire life. You don't have to fight the diseases or a disease your entire life. His anointing breaks the yoke. His fire comes and He purifies your body, man. God is alive. 
And God is powerful. Father, we come against every sickness that is in their body, every disease. We cast it to death in Jesus' mighty name. And we say, say, be made well in the mighty name of Jesus. Be healed in Jesus' mighty name. Holy Ghost, may your anointing flow from the crown of their heads and to the soles of their feet. I break the chains of sickness and disease in Jesus' mighty name. Come on, pray, pray, pray. Heal, 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 heal. Healed in Jesus' name. Healed in Jesus' mighty name. Heal. You will feel the power of the Holy Ghost running through your body. You will feel a burden and a yoke lift from your shoulders. Something is happening in you. A well is being stirred in you. Jesus healed that baby. He can heal you. God gave strength to an infant. He can give strength to you. Hallelujah. Amen. I want you to look at me. We're going to pray for addictions. You've got an addiction. You don't have to explain to the people next to you what it is. Addiction, or you feel like tormented in your sleep. You feel like there's, a, there's an unfamiliar spirit that can be in you. We'll not ask questions, but we're going to pray for you. That addiction needs to leave, and that demon also needs to leave. God should put you back into your right mind. You don't have to be anxious and depressed all the time. If that is you, please lift your hands. We want to pray with you. Come on. You need prayer. You need deliverance. You're in the front. You're on my right. You're on my right. There's three, four hands. They're at the back. Put your hands on those people whose hands are lifted. Ushers, help me. Leaders in the church, help me. Turn around. Look at the people next to you. Come on. Put your hands up on people. Your hands carry power. Your hands carry power. You're anointed to cast out devils. You're anointed to heal the sick. You are anointed. You are anointed. Father, I come against every demonic spirit in the mighty name of Jesus. And we command them now to leave their bodies in Jesus' mighty name. Pack your bags, demon, and be gone in Jesus' name. I break every addiction, every chain, substance abuse. We come against it right now in Jesus' mighty name. Be loose, be loosed, be free in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Come on, pray for them, lay hands on them. Every chain broken, every chain broken, every burden lifted. You don't need sleeping pills anymore. You don't need, God is healing you. God is healing you by the power of His Son, the power of the Holy Ghost. Jesus is washing you clean with His blood. Be set free. Be loosed in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Now I want everyone to please lift their hands to the Lord. Father, you said you've been anointed, so you've anointed us. To preach the gospel to the poor. There's people, Father, struggling with poverty. Give them vision, new ideas, the strength to stand up to go and find a job again. Open up doors for your people that no man can shut. They will experience increase and multiplication in their life. They shouldn't be poor. They shouldn't be begging. 
Put dignity upon them, Father, and give them opportunity. Secondly, Father, you say that your anointing is to heal the brokenhearted. Father, these people have been through divorces, been hurt by family members, by business partners, by Christians. Their hearts are broken into a million pieces. They have pain and disappointment. So Holy Ghost, I ask you to come now, anoint their heads and heal their broken hearts. Take those million pieces and put it back together again. Remove hearts of stone, replace it with a heart of flesh. Remove the roots of bitterness. And may a spring, a well, flood up inside their hearts that they can have peace and joy, grace and love. You said, Father, that you'll give recovery of sight to the blind. I'm asking you, Father, to restore vision in the eyes of your people. To see a country that's busy healing. To see a, a business that's being built. To give them vision of hope and a future. That this is not their end. Yesterday won't dictate their future. They will have vision in their eyes. They will lift up their eyes and see. Wake them up at night, give them visions and dreams. Let light into their souls again, Father, I pray. I thank you that every person will receive the healing power of Jesus. The liberating power of Jesus. Anoint every person. Lift them up. Anoint them for service. Anoint them for service. And anoint them with great power to get the job done in the mighty name of Jesus. If you believe that, shout amen with everything you have. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.